Hi, everybody. Welcome to All About the Joy. We got Rick, of course, in the house, as always. We got Tony D and one of our new favorite people, Tommy. But Tommy, why did your camera just change? Now we're looking up at you. I Because I, I had to move it because my other device, because Tony said about charging it. So I'm like, you know what? Let me double check and make sure that this is charged. So I wanted to plug it in and charge it. Is it okay? <laughs> Yeah, no, it's them? fine. It just oh, looks okay. like we're looking up at you like this now. Yeah, sorry. Just don't look up my nose. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, well, you know, I can hard, only but... edit so much, so I'm just <laughs> <laughs> So this is the first time Tony D and Tommy Lee are on the show together. So we've already did little introductions in, in the green room, and they already hate each other. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But Tommy, I have to tell you something that happened the other day. So I never name drop with my clients. So my clients don't know each other. A couple of them have bumped into each other and they know that I work for them, but it's kind of like, I really do a good job of never talking to my clients about other people. So the other day I was talking to one of my clients and I was just like, yeah, yeah, da, 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 Tommy Lee. And it was so great to touch base with him again. And she was like, Oh my God, that's the first time you ever name dropped. Oh my God. And I was like, like what are you talking about? Like, I'm, you know, in my head, I'm like, name dropped. Yep. Yep. It was really funny. I was it's like, yeah, funny. no, funny. no, it's not that Tommy Lee, but she doesn't believe me. She thinks I'm covering. So she thinks Tommy <laughs> Lee Lee is actually my client. So we're just going to go with that, I guess. It's all good. Like, he was here. He was here first. This is the original. That's right. Are you sure about that? Because I yes, looked up. Yes, believe me, I did my research. He's like okay. two years sure. younger than me. All right, all right, all right. So the first thing I wanted to ask Tony, because he celebrated his birthday on Thanksgiving. Happy, Happy birthday. belated. Happy thank belated. You. How Happy was your birthday? birthday? Thank you, thank you, thank you. It was excellent. I um, went to see my mom, went to see my sister, my brother-in-law, my nephew, and my niece. Hung out with them for the weekend. Much needed. Um, they pretty much made me come up there to tell me I need to get up out of here and just take a break from everything I've been going through this year. Yeah. I'm grateful for that. Grateful, definitely grateful for family. Excuse me, we ate like crazy. Um, ourselves. Yeah, it was it was it was cool. I needed that. I yeah, needed you, you you had some cool Facebook posts too. Yeah. So yeah. so yeah. is it weird? I mean, because this has happened more than once that your birthday lands on Thanksgiving. That's the day I was born. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Wow. So yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's special to my mom. And I've been told by my grandmother and one of my aunts that I'm the guy that interrupted Thanksgiving dinner. Wait, I missed that. Say that again. I interrupted Thanksgiving oh, dinner. You inter <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of mean in a way. But you oh, were man. a blessing and, a, and and they were grateful for you. Yes, right. <laughs> well, I, got, so I got to these back for the rest of my life. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, mom man. was thankful that she finally got to pop you out. Thank you. Yeah. Come out. I believe it. I, believe it. I, believe I think it. of all the holidays, if I had to be born on one, it would be Thanksgiving. That's a good one. That's a good, That's a good question, actually. So Joel's birthday, Joel was on the show, is on July 4th, which yeah. I think would might be another cool one as well. Just because like yeah. as a kid, you would think everyone's celebrating your birthday or whatever. Right. I have a sister Joel, doing July 4th. Do I know Joel? No. Oh, okay. I was thinking Joel Dubay. No, 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 no. Joel, all, the, all the fireworks would cut Joel up. Well, I just found screaming. out yesterday. Wait, 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 wait. Can't talk over each other because I am not that good at editing. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Rick. Go ahead, Rick. I said another good reason for Fourth of July is the fireworks might cover up this, the mom screaming. Yeah. That's true. That's true. That's a good one. What were you saying, Tommy? I found out that we might be putting Christmas Day on hold because my nephew and his girlfriend, she's do around that time oh. like, so if she goes early we're not okay. having christmas see i would think that's a terrible day to have a birthday christmas day that's what i, I heard. think that would be horrible but that's yeah. what i've heard too hmm. i've known well, christmas babies and i got a sister she was born on fourth of july so oh yeah over. yeah her and joel lava yeah do I know Joel Dubay? We'll have to talk about that later, Tommy, because I know the name. I just don't remember, I think. He's now the president of Nesba, which there's no more Eastern Mass, so he's... Yeah, Nesba. all right. Okay, we're going to go into the... Okay, That's yeah, another right. story for Another you. people, other people. Okay, Moving so forward. how was everyone's Thanksgiving? Tommy, Lee, how was your Thanksgiving? It was great. It was Really? really yeah, really, really was. You know, I was kind of... 
I was looking at the weather and I was like, oh, it's, it might rain and snow up in New Hampshire and sleet. And then I got to drive home at night and I don't like driving at night. And I had to take my oldest brother with me and drive 30 minutes out of my way to get him. And then, but we timed it perfectly. The food was amazing as always. My niece is a great cook. Just sitting around and laughing with good food and, you know, old stories of back in the day and, you awesome. know, it's just fun. It was just fun. It was, it was quiet. Fun. There weren't for once. There was not thirty people. It was a small group. Yeah, that's always good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was nice. That's awesome, Rick. How was yours? Well, um, uh, okay. We were supposed to go to my son's mom's house, but um, let's just say it didn't happen. So okay, yeah. we can just leave it at that if you want. That's sure. okay. Sure. <laughs> He did come over at night with food, though, so I was grateful. So and it was good. So all right, and, yeah. I'm gonna have to get that backstory later. That's all I'm saying. Oh, yeah, no. No. Yeah, no. I I had a great Thanksgiving. I ended up doing some volunteer work, which is what I kind of always do on Thanksgiving. And I had just been back home because I had to go to that funeral. It's, I was done with traveling, but I had a lovely Thanksgiving as well. It probably is one of my favorite holidays. I think out of all of them, I think it's the easiest one. And then, of course, you know, my birthday, which is the most important. You know, but that's coming up in January. Just like yes, January one. babies. Woo. Yeah, because woohoo! <laughs> all right, so um, <laughs> that's so funny. Um, all right, I wanted to know if you guys had had any good or bad things you wanted to share that has happened in the past week or so. Any news? Anything good? Bad? Um, Go ahead, Tommy. I have good news, as you know already. Yes, and that you know, it's kind of one of the reasons why I put it in there. I was going to force you to say anything, but. <laughs> So I got a job offer. Awesome. Wait, you have to tell everyone that you were looking for work for a while, right? I Yeah, almost a year since January. Yeah. And, you know, at my age and where I am in my career, I have the right to be picky. I yeah, deserve, of you know, course. I deserve to be paid my worth and, you know, I'm not. But at the same time, I understand where the economy is and where we are right now. So I'm, I, I'm flexible. But. You know, there's certain criteria that just have to be like, I will not drive an hour and a half into the city anymore mm. and an hour and a half home anymore. That's I don't just, think I've ever done that in my entire life. But Because you, know. you lived in the city. I live in the suburbs. Oh, that's right. That's right. So, that's right. You know? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Sorry. Um, yeah. So it it's close to home. It's 20 minutes out. Um, it's a contract position covering for the HR manager who's going out on maternity Mater- leave. Yeah. But it does have the potential to go permanent. So, mm-hmm. congratulations! I'm so happy really? for you. So you, really? all you had to do was go on all about the joy, and boom, you got a job. You see what happened? It just happened, <laughs> just like the good energy. Yep. The good energy just throws <laughs> it out there. Yeah, that's what it was. I'm sure yep. of it. I'm sure of it. Rick, what about you? Well, you said good or bad. So yeah. remember, remember how I've been a little bit whining about my job because I'm like, I don't know what's going on, who's where, what's yep. where. Well, now yeah. I know kind of what happened. So the main building that they wanted did not get constructed properly. So I was like, oh, you're kidding me. So what's going to happen? When's everything going to be normal? And they said, maybe April. I was like, April? Oh, my I, God. I got to deal with this till April? Oh, so, no. Oh, well. It is what it is. But it doesn't mess with you money-wise or income-wise. It's just no, a pain in the ass. That's a pain. All. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you teleworked for the most part. No, I work from home, but they just moved from where they were in one city to another city to two different buildings. Right. One was supposed to be temporary and one the permanent. Well, the permanent one, it was not up to code, and now they got to redo stuff, and oh, wow. they don't even have electricity there. You got to bring a generator. <laughs> what is happening? Oh. So, yeah, it's craziness right now. It's just cumbersome for you, though. Yeah, because I literally don't know who's where, what's where. Like, if somebody orders something, right. oh, yeah, we probably have it. Let me call. I don't know who's where it is. It's just annoying. Isn't wow. that pretty much an OSHA violation? What is? What is? The building, and then you have to bring your own, like, heater or ventilation or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. Tommy? I don't know. Tommy knows all about this stuff. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'm going to have to agree. I mean, you would have to be up to code with OSHA and, um, you know, all those violations. And you can't have people working in a building that doesn't have heat or electricity. Yeah, it's literally just my boss. He's the only one that goes there. 
Yeah, he owns a company, so pfft. Oh. Whatever. Tony, I know you uh, texting or doing other things. Or no, whatever. I'm actually, I am. I am responding. I was, I was clearing my bills out. Sorry. I got to pay my bills. <laughs> You like don't I, have to be on the show, baby. <laughs> I got to be on all my shows. He has to be on all the shows. So he's I got to be on all my shows. shows. He's a busy so man tonight. Jeez. Actually, I enjoy this. I really do. And I know you do because you're always on the shows. Oh, well, if people ask me to be there, and it's not that it, there's times when I can't be, I'll give you this past weekend more than anything. I'll give you when I'm at work. But if I've got free time, I try to be there. I try to support everybody. I really do. So okay, I we're not going to talk about that at all. Look at Tommy. Don't know you, so he's like, "Oh, that is so." Did nice. you see the smile it's on his face when he came? I said, "Did you see he the appreciation?" Spreads himself, he spreads himself too thin. There you then go. he gets upset with everybody, but he don't get upset because he's not that kind of guy. But down deep inside, he is. You know what I mean? like, mm -hmm. It's a it, it, it's it's a weird thing. He's just <laughs> crazy. We love him, but he loco. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey Rick, write that down. Carmen says she loves me. No, oh my god, yeah, don't actually. <laughs> it's, it's on video. It's on video <laughs> now, that, so right. there you go. Lord. So, Tony, any any good or bad news this week? I mean, you had a birthday, so it couldn't have been like super bad. I have to tell you that this past month is good for a lot of things that need to be done and things Yay. to be cleared up, over with, resolved. Mm. Um, it's, it was a lot. And Rick knows a lot of what I've been going through for the past couple of years. And what I've had to get done in between the move, getting wait, adjusted. Wait, 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 wait. I'm jealous, jealous, jealous. Wait, what, what, why does Rick know something I don't know? Because Rick been talking to me for the past couple of years. He know what I've been going through. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's so weird because Rick be talking to me and he didn't tell me nothing about you. So because he's going to be telling my business. <laughs> oh, okay. I see how this is. That's Rick, a compliment. You know who's going to get in trouble right now, right? It's going to be Rick. No, you know about me having to move and everything. So that was the biggest yeah. thing. I was fighting that move. And he knew how hard I was trying to go through that. But I got through the move. I got okay. things cleared up. Well, let's give Tommy a little information. You just finished a divorce and you had to move out of your home or something, right? Yeah, it was a fight I lost. Just being right. honest about it. It was a fight that I lost. So I had to move. And it was moving, adjusting. I had to travel out of town for a convention, come back and work, and go back out of town for my birthday, then come back and work. So it's been a lot. It's been very busy. It's been a progressive month. I will say progressive more than anything. Right. Not a struggle, but for some people who can't make it and for others who have make it, excuse me, I try to get both sides of the story. You're either going to inspire or you're going to enforce something that somebody else went through when you tell a lot of your own testimonies. And I, I enjoy that. People have to learn how to get something out of being around people or give a message that's going to inspire instead of being so negative on social media. I'm so sick of these negative folks up here. It's ridiculous. That's for right. real. For real. That's for real. That's yeah. for real. That's true. And that's what I try to push more than anything. Do you but, but I don't even think it's just social media. I mean, I know you spend a lot of time on social media, but I, this is one of the things that happened to me this week. I'm just tired of negativity in general. Mm. Like I have no tolerance anymore. Like people coming up with excuses at work for why they didn't do something they're supposed to do all the time. Like, like we have to have reports ready for our clients, right? It's mm -hmm. part of what we do. Mm -hmm. So like not having that regular report at the meeting on a Wednesday that we've been doing for five years, you that's know what different. I mean? That's different. And, and then the excuse is not, you know what? I'm sorry. I messed up. It's, well, Sheila didn't call Susan, and then Susan told me, and I thought that, the, and I was, I have no patience anymore, and I don't even think that's about getting older. I'm just done with people being irresponsible, negative, mm -hmm. people who push other people down to lift themselves up. Yes. I am so over you. I'm I am over that. you. I'm very that's yeah. your sound bite. That's your clip. I want that out there. People who have to push other people down to get themselves up, you suck. I'm calling you out. I've been like this for decades, <laughs> right? Y'all are the weakest motherfuckers walking God's green earth. And I said it just like that on purpose. It's if true. you have to bring somebody down to put yourself up, you're the weak one. We ought to crab in a barrel on your ass to the bottom. I said. <laughs> Damn. Okay. That will be a clip as well. <laughs> I, I got plenty. You know, I keep plenty. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no. Look at, but I, I, I think it says something about the society we're in right now. So right now, what's happening? It's six fifteen here on the West Coast, and uh, you know we don't really talk about politics here. But right now, DeSantis and Gavin Newsom are on Fox News having quote unquote debate. And Let me go get my remote. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, let's not watch it now. You gonna watch it yeah. now? You didn't even know it was out. I want to be watch it on one. the same wavelength of what you're bringing to the tape. Watch it on Ted's show. Yeah, watch it on Ted's show. Well, it probably will be over by then. Oh, it's supposed to be ninety minutes. It's supposed to be ninety. I'm minutes. pretty sure you can YouTube it or find it somewhere online. Yeah, no, I mean, Tony, you do what you gotta do, but I don't want to hear it in the background. The the reason why I bring it up is because. I know that a lot of people are like all gunning to watch this rivalry fight thingamajiggy between Florida and California. And I'm I'm so over it. You I know? have not heard that aspect of it. I have not heard that. What do you mean? What the aspect of the California it? thing? I have not heard that aspect of it. Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, that's why they're that's why they're having this debate, right? It's because they've been both like who's Sorry, I'm going to say it this way. Whose penis is bigger, right? Whose dick is bigger is basically. And look, at I love Gavin Newsom. Don't get me wrong. I live in California for a reason and I voted for him and I love him. But, he, you know, even I'm like disgusted that this is even happening because it's not necessary. You yes. know what I mean? For me, it's just, but it's going back to that negativity. It's like we're all harnessing. I mean, even like because you're putting it on because we all like the car accident. We pretend that we don't. But we all we all gravitate towards negativity, and I don't know why. I, I'm gonna give you the truth. I really didn't give a damn yet about a lot of these politicians campaigning for the presidency. I think it's too early, and I'm not too comfortable with any of the candidates. I'm really not. Yeah, we're not talking about politics here, but thank you for sharing. No, I'm just saying, going back to negativity, right? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. If you like, want to go to the saying about the internet, I'm saying it's everywhere. Is and my I want point. to contribute to that if you don't mind. I've been saying for years. Disrespect is taking over society worse than politics, and negativity is one of the biggest aspects of it. People are very negative and disrespectful in today's society. They've been that way before the pandemic. They've been worse after what happens. Well, in what the- do you mean by disrespect? Can you can you hone people, in on like an example? Yeah, people have no respect for anything or anybody. It's terrible out here. There is yes, sir. I have to agree with you, mm-hmm. and I I'm gonna put it in the terms that. I I use and I actually come and I learned this from Jerry. I think especially after what you just said after COVID, mm-hmm. everybody is me 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 I I I. Yes, it's all about me. Mm-hmm. And no I, I, regards for anything else or anything anybody exactly. else has except for themselves. One hundred percent. And I think it's gotten worse after COVID. Yes, it's mm-hmm. interesting that this came up. I was watching Gary V on Twitch, mm-hmm. and one of the things they were saying was that in our generation, it used to be the elders were the respected ones and the kids were like, what do you know? Now it's flipped. If you're yeah. not young and hip and hot, you're nothing. And the old people, what do you know? It's reversed. Yeah. He goes, that's messed up. It's true. That's very true. But it's- I'm going to I'm gonna put a little twist in this. Like, you know, as much as I agree with what you're saying, Rick, our generation is the one that's raising these kids. Like, I, I've mm-hmm. had this argument before with parents. I'm not a parent, but that's why I can see so clearly. That's how I'm going to say it. (laughs) Like, people are upset with this other generation, but you motherfucking raised them. You know what I mean? Like, you taught them. You gave them an iPhone when they were four so that they could be babysat. And then you're mad at them because that's all they do. Hey, Cynthia. Cynthia, How you doing? She's like, sorry, I'm late. It's okay. <laughs> that was actually um, part of it, too. He was saying it was because of the technology and not because the old people don't understand how to use the technology, so they feel left out. And the young people are like, you don't know how to do this, so making them look like they're stupid. I don't and- even know if that's true. That's an extreme. Because we're not even talking about old, old people. We're talking about us and millennials versus and, and Gen Z, right? I mean, all of us know how to use technology, I mean, I know what you're saying, Rick, but I also think that's a cop out. It's not about technology. The whole great thing about the human race is that we're always progressing forward and moving faster, right? We had col- color TV when I was growing up, as opposed to radio from back in the day or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm just saying. So I refuse to use technology as a reason why people are disrespectful or negative. I actually think a part of it, this is just my little opinion, is it goes back to what Tommy was saying, this me, me, me thing. Mm. We really have, have like, what's that thing? Is it called pendulum? Not pendulum, but we, we've gone, we've swung one way to the, the other. Scales. Yeah, yeah, the scales are, but well, maybe it is pendulum. I don't know. When you, you, you go from one end to Pendulum is so, swinging. Okay, so pendulum, right? So I remember back in the day when I was younger, it was really all about like, I'm of service. 
I'm in the way. I'm a kid. I need to be quiet. I need to really do my work really, really hard and try, try hard because I need to please other people. And then we're all like, no, we need to have self-care. We need to take care of ourselves. We need to. And, and I'm all good for that. But the pendulum has swung the other way where it's all about me, 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 me. We have to get to a middle place where you can both be humble and be of service and take care of other people and love other people and consider other people, be considerate, but also take care of yourself and understand that you are worthy and I that agree. you matter and that you should I have so. self-care. I agree. I agree. Who you got to take, take care of yourself before you can take care of anybody else. Wait, what? who did Tommy just talk to? I, I, I was listening to you and, I have Alexa playing in the background and I <laughs> okay. I thought she was a little too loud. So I didn't want her to overtake what anybody was saying. I was like, introduce, honey, introduce. <laughs> we need to see so who I the person I is. She would just lower it. Uno poco poco. I thought it was the dog. <laughs> I thought it was the dog too. That's what I was Oh no, he already went to bed. He oh my god, he's so funny. He looked at me, he's like, uh yeah, da da. It's uh eight o'clock. Let's go. <laughs> and he stopped and he looked at me and he was like, fine. And he went and he curled up in the bed. <laughs> like, I'm done. I'm That's out. A good dog. That's a good, yeah. dog. good dog. I'm actually more upset. I mean, it's kind of the same thing. I I have no more patience for negativity, but it's also the lack of consideration of other people. Mm. You know, the way in which, and I, I'll say this till I'm blue in the face. I, I am so disgusted by, don't get upset, Tommy, but I'm done <laughs> with pet parents and pet parents who then look at other people, other human beings like crap, like homeless people. Like I literally watch every day when I'm here in California, I watch people, they have their dogs with their outfits on or they're in the carriage or whatever. And they walk by a homeless person who is minding their own damn business, just mm -hmm. trying to whatever, you know, exist. And just the nastiness, just the, you can feel the energy. I'm, I'm over it. It's kind of like, that's kind of how I feel about soccer moms, you know, with their- Do they even exist anymore? Is that just with, a- Oh, believe me, they're out there, you know, with their baseball caps and the ponytail through the back, and they got their, <laughs> their, their jogging suit on, their pink jogging suit, and drinking their latte. It's not <laughs> a latte. It's usually in a thing, and it's all like- Yeah, yeah we all know what it is. It's not a latte. The cappuccino. <laughs> Right. Yeah, it's a cappuccino. It's a little extra <laughs> from Starbucks. Oh, that's Wait, so we are soccer moms I, now? Karens? Is that what they are? Yes, soccer some moms. are. Yes, some of them are. Yes, and that's a good point that you just brought up. See how things evolve, how things change. Oh, from soccer moms. Soccer moms are now right. I mean, I guess the Karen thing is the people they want to talk to your manager and they just don't have any patience or whatever. But isn't isn't being a soccer mom a negative thing or is it not? Because I don't know what a soccer mom is. Originally, no. no. Okay. They're the stay-at-home moms doing everything with the kids and the father's always busy working. Correct. Originally. Okay. Originally. Okay, and then it evolved into something else. It evolved into somebody who's to looking to live their life. And I want to say as a dependent of their spouse, which is cool because you're doing something with the kids, but some of them want to be drama, gossiping. Mm -hmm. It pretty much winds up to their board and they need something to do. That's why they start doing the camera crap. Mm. Right. Cynthia just said Starbucks with Baileys. <laughs> hey, whatever works, baby. No, but I hear you. <laughs> so they all drink your white Russians. <laughs> I mean, let's face right. it. If we could all stay home and be independently wealthy, I'm pretty sure we'd all do it, wouldn't we? Mm. Yes, those of us that have worked, absolutely. You know, okay, here's what I'll say. I feel like just because I know so many ridiculously wealthy people, that is an actual recipe for disaster because at some point you get bored, you have nothing to do, and then you start nitpicking over the stupidest thing. So you have to find something to do with your life. That's why I tell people it's not about money. I know so many rich people, I have never in all my life, and I've been here now 30 years. This August, I'll be here 30 wow. years, and, and I've worked for so old oil money, self-made millionaires who have nothing to do with the industry, Hollywood celebrities who had nothing or whatever, or our Nepo children or whatever you call them, whatever. I swear to you on my mother's grave, I would not trade my life or my financial situation for not one of them people, not one. I and I you. have two of them that I think are my favorite clients. I still would not change nothing because I see they're not 
it, it, money does not make you happy. It gives you choices, <laughs> but it does not change the yeah. essence of who yeah. you are in the world. And do I think rich people can be happy? Sure. I'm not saying they're not. I'm just saying money comes with a whole other lot of problems. And if you're not okay with who you are in the world, a lot of money is not going to make that better. That's exactly right. what I'll go to with you. Rick, I, go ahead, Rick. I didn't want to cut you off. No, no. That's what I'm saying. Um, you're around the rich folks. So for those of us who aren't around rich folks, let me ask you this. They've got the money that we're fighting to get. Are they lonelier? Mainly because they can't trust who they're around. Or are they lonelier based on the knowledge that they have that we don't? Tony, that's a great question. I'll, I'll tell you this part. I think loneliness, it runs the gamut through everyone, right? I mean, there's that's part of the problem with social media and people being so negative is we're all pretending to have these amazing lives with our Instagram posts and our TikToks or whatever. But at the end of the day, the truth is probably something else, right? But we I have think they're showing the good right? times of their lives more than they're showing off what they don't have. Right, right. So, mm -hmm. so then we all start comparing ourselves to the yeah. best parts of Tony D as opposed to actually knowing maybe what the truth is, you know, which is an entire, you know, thing. So let me be clear. The reason why I wouldn't trade my life with any of the rich people that I have worked for, all of them, is because money doesn't solve the problem. I love who I am. I love the person I've become, I love everything I've done right. I've learned from everything I've done wrong. And I feel really confident and secure in who I am. I don't think I can say that about a lot of the people that are my clients. It has nothing to do with money and everything to do with the fact that money is a facade. Money gives you choices. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I would be like, oh, no, I won the lottery. No, I must be <laughs> living paycheck to paycheck and I wouldn't no. take it. I'm saying that money isn't the, the thing that solves loneliness mm -hmm. or actually most of the people I've met, especially in the past, I had some pretty in, interesting clients who grew up with money. They had nannies, you know, generational wealth is very different than Hollywood wealth. Very, very different. And I would say those were the, the loneliest people I've ever known okay. because it's not even that they don't trust anybody, but there's a, um, like, it's sad when I think about it. A lot of people thought I was their friend. Like they would talk, they were paying me. Of course I was going to listen to you. Right. I wasn't interested, but you were paying me and I'm doing your books or whatever. And if you want to talk to me about what your doctor said and your daughter and your son, and I'm going to listen to you. But they would be like, oh, you're such a good friend, Carmen. And it was a weird thing because I'd be like, nah, I know where this is going. We are not friends because they would fire me in a heartbeat tomorrow. That's true. And that's your mentality on that aspect of what you're doing. I got that point. Yes. So money doesn't change loneliness or happiness or it, it, it doesn't give you medical, like, like you would think being able to go to any medical doctor and do whatever you want to do. You know what? My clients still died of cancer, suffered with whatever diseases, like everyone else, mm -hmm. you know, like all of these weird things. I could do right? this kind of thing for an hour. I could really do this for an hour. <laughs> what for an hour? Do what? The questions that I could ask you from the go answers ahead. you have, because I don't know too many people in that position. And a lot of times when we bring up questions about things, you'll notice how me and Brown will be like, we know this, we know this. You'll be like, really? It's, the, it's both sides of the equation. The yeah. rich people, you would think they had to earn their way up there. When they get there, you realize how many other people aren't. You're watching everybody else go through what they're going through. Some of the loneliness is... They, I mean, not, look, at, I'm not, I'm not, look, at, I'm, I'm not trying this. I'm just saying in my experience, and I can mm -hmm. say I've, I've worked with, I'm going to say over 40 extremely wealthy people of all, you know, over the years, I've seen people who had nothing and then made it big. That's a whole other ball game. Like you would think like, oh, they're yeah. the good ones. No, it, it money can be very manipulative and powerful and you create bumps along the way. I'll, I'll tell you, uh, I, I worked for, everyone knows, I worked for a brand new school and that was a young man who still has a company now and is, is, is very wealthy comparatively to other people like ourselves. And watching him go from nothing and become so successful was an extraordinary window of something I will never 
uh, make mistakes because I learned from that. If I ever have that opportunity to go that route, you know what I mean? Because I window of enthusiasm. It's not enthusiasm. Money has an ability because if you're not mature enough to deal with it, it changes you. Yes. Right. It because you think now you have power, but money power is bullshit power. Gotcha. Real power has nothing to do with money. Right. I think it has to do with respect. Exactly. Oh, that's all. We're done. And that was a great show. Thank you so much. <laughs> but, but that is it. If you yes. respect someone, doesn't matter how much money they have, all of a sudden, that's a real different kind of, or, or if somebody's really smart and is able to teach you something, right? You have respect for them. That's going to trump any kind of money any day of the week. You know, there's too many people that believe that are, they're that are broke or just wanted more, but they think, well, if I was rich, I would be happy. And it's so not true. You, you know, know, it's funny you said that because this is the third time money and happiness has come up in this conversation yeah. in different ways. Mm -hmm. Rick, you just said it, Carmen, you said it earlier. Money does not buy you happiness. No. Mm -hmm. And I love that I've had the experience because like we say it as a cliche. But I am telling you, I, I swear to you on my mother's grave, and I'll never say that I've said it twice, but it is so factual. I've seen it up close and personal. Yeah. And look, it's, it's, it's not to say that we shouldn't want to pursue to have more money to pay some bills. That would feel so good. And, and, and I am all for people making whatever money and developing whatever they want and creativity. And, you know, you get your paycheck, do what you got to do. But the people, I'll, I'll tell you this one story that's actually a cool one. So I, I worked for this woman who was very regretful of the way in which she raised her children because she raised her children all with nannies. So yeah. all of her children are older than I am, okay? She has since passed away. She was one of my favorite clients because we ended up getting really, really close. I worked for her when I first came out here. Then when I got this big job at Brand New School, she helped me with buying like designer clothing or whatever. We, you know, we had lunch or whatever because I wasn't working for her anymore. And then afterwards, I ended up, she became one of my clients again because she opened up a nonprofit, you know, anyways. So you get the idea, right? So we did have kind of a more friendly, uh, different relationship. But she would talk to me about things that she regretted, which was that, you know, the way she grew up and then the way her children were raised. And there was a distance between her and her children. Mm -hmm. And it's palpable. You know what I mean? It's so palpable. And at the end of her life, you know, she 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 did this really amazing, beautiful thing that she gave all of her money away to charity. Right. She had this foundation or whatever. Her children who would never want for anything. Right. Because you're, you're talking kind of like close to kind of Warren Buffett money. Right. This is what mm -hmm. we're talking about in a way. Right. We're so angry about it angry about they would never it didn't touch their trust funds didn't do anything but the amount of anger and angst what they did you know because it was the principle to them it was you know she did this to us she didn't tell us and i was like that is some weird motherfucking shit like i would have been so proud of my mother i would have been like wow you know what i mean but yep. and it's to me, it will always stick. It, and I mean, there's so much more I would say, but I don't want to be too ghetto about it. But <laughs> they were also angry with the staff that worked for her because, well, we didn't know either. It's not like she told us all what she was doing, but we were so much closer to her than they were at the end of her life. And they were so evil mm -hmm. to everyone. Hmm. So I just, I, I say this because money is the root of all evil. It doesn't have to be, but if you're not secure in who you are, money has no friend or family. True. True. It's the love of money that's the root of money. And that's why he's pointing at me, because he knows I'm getting ready to say it. it's the <laughs> love of money. Not oh, money. is that what's happening? It's the, the love, love of, of money. money. I don't know. I, I mean, yeah, the love of money. You're right. I think money is a tool, yes. and we should all want the best tool possible. You know what I mean? That's how I have learned my lesson from all these people is – so many of the people that I've worked for throughout the years have such regrets. Hey, Ted. Hey, Ted. How you doing? What's cream? cream. Cash he always proves everything around me. Cream gets dollar dollar bill, y'all. Oh, oh <laughs> Ted Hicks is in the house. I'm like, what? He opened, me and Rick are always like, what? <laughs> that's why I'm here. Yeah, that's why you're here. That's why you're here. 
but money should be used as a tool. And because mm-hmm. I handle so many people's money, I feel like I've learned that is the lesson I've learned is like, if you can see money, whether you have it or you don't have it, detach the emotional part. Tommy, I was telling you this the other day, and I've told so many people this story. It's not a story. It's a saying. You know, we all say, oh, money don't mean nothing to me. I don't care about money. Da, da, da. Yes, you do. Because when somebody tries to offer you money or somebody tries to help you, we all like, no, 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 I'm good. Oh. We all get into a crazy funk about it. If yeah. you really don't give a fuck about money, it's not going to hit you emotionally, whether you're giving it, whether you're receiving it, whether you're sharing it. You know what I mean? And it's like, that's kind of what I'm trying to say. I have worked so hard in my life to just realize that that's the lesson I've learned. I guess I had to learn it working for all these people. You know, people think they can like uh, this, this other client the other day said to me, what if I pay you more money? Will you stay? Will you work a few more hours a week for me? I said, what I want, you can't give me. I want more time. Mm. He doesn't yeah. know I'm about to let him go. I hope he ain't watching this. Show, but... <laughs> what, what well, Tony? So you know what? You I said you really went deep on them. I got where you're coming from, but you went deep on them. Really good point. Like the reason, like I said earlier, you know, I have certain rules and regulations and standards. I am not going to do an hour and a half That's drive right. into the city and an hour to drop half drive because I need more time. That's right. That's four hours out of my day. You know, I get up in the morning. It's dark. I come home at night after working. It's dark. What do I do? How, right. What kind of what quality of life is that when I it's come not. home? I throw a frozen dinner in the microwave because I'm too tired to cook anything. Watch the news getting... and go to bed. Why don't you just have your them. chef set up your meals for the week? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, <laughs> so my clients. They don't like have their you don't chef. get enough of you don't get enough value for the time spent. Is what you're saying? Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. what if it was worth it? Say you had less hours, you still had the same drive. Would you do it? Which goes back to what she was saying about the time. That's a really good question. I appreciate it. And I'm asking seriously. I've had jobs and I want to throw this out there. Yeah. There was only one time ever I felt like the money wasn't worth it. Mm-hmm. I was making more money than I ever made before. Mm-hmm. I had debts cleared. I had excess in the bank. And then I got tired of the job. And that's when I was deployed overseas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't want to be here anymore. I'd rather be home. I wish I could make this a home. I just don't want to be at this location. So for a lot of people where the money isn't worth it, you're not enjoying what you're doing. Say you were to enjoy what you're doing. And there are a lot of rich people who get a kick out of what they are doing where the money isn't a problem, but they don't have a problem with the money that they're making either. See, the two kind of coincided. What right. Tommy is actually saying is he's got to put too much into getting the money. Which is I look at it this way. Mm-hmm. And and the situation I was in, I was making really good money working in the city. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't have to want for anything. The problem was I had never, I never had any time to to do anything. Yes, I couldn't take a vacation because I had to be there. I, you know, I didn't have the time to spend to just even on a weekend go shopping because well, my phone's gonna ring and oh, we need you to come in. You know, things Dude, like that. I was twenty one. Moved out on my own for the first time. Was working two jobs. I had money in the bank and no time to spend it because I was too tired to go anywhere. Exactly. So I fully understand what you're saying. And mind you, I only had an extra $250 in the bank at the time, which isn't a lot of money. But for somebody who was single with no kids living in a used apartment driving a used car, yeah, I was right. <laughs> yeah, right. So I get it. I and especially now at my age. Because you was able to get a job that paid you what you was worth and you had time on your hands, I think you would get something out of some of the comfortability rich people have if they are living that comfortably. And based on what Carmen is saying, a bunch of them aren't. I agree with Cynthia. No job is worth your mental health. I agree too. By the way, Tommy, Cynthia is the one who loves you. She's like, he is so cute and adorable. I love you. She can't wait to meet you. You'll you'll meet her. She's gonna. She's she's on our show. She's my cousin. She's actually actually my cousin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's your cousin. You didn't know Cynthia was my cousin. She's my cousin. Y'all do yeah. y'all do look similar though. Y'all do laugh the same. Both we don't look similar at all because we have different. I told you we don't have a family tree. We have a family bush. bush. So we don't look at all like, like it was. Yeah, but no. You, look, at, I'm not saying that people. Oh, Rick, why don't you chime in? You didn't say nothing. Well, I was gonna say if you can't enjoy life, I don't care how much money you throw at me. If I'm miserable, I don't want your money. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying it. people are walking around miserable who are rich. I'm just saying I do know a, a couple people that I think handle money well. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They These two individual people happen to earn their money. They grew up really poor. You know, working working in human resources, not to cut anybody off, but okay. <laughs> no truer words have ever been said. Like, I've looked at people that I've worked with, and I, you know, you get to know them, and you can tell their stress, whatever the case may be, whether it's about money or a home situation or a personal thing, whatever. I've actually said to people, you know what? Go home. Yeah. Take tomorrow off. Go home. Take tomorrow off. Decompress. We'll pay you for the day. My boss is looking at me like, are you kidding me right now? I'm like, oh, that's legal. Work with that's me. Legal. Please work oh, with me. And that's a good boss. <laughs> I mean, I don't do it for everyone. I do it for the people who I know deserve it. Agreed. Well, you look, know? here's the thing. This is my mantra. I always tell my clients, your commodity is not whatever it is you think you're creating. Your commodity is the people who work for you. I don't care what you're creating. I don't care what you think you're putting out in the world. If the people aren't there working, doing what they got to do, you have nothing to sell. Yes. So you're absolutely on point. I mean, that's, you know, I, I have this conversation all the time. And it, it, again, I have no patience anymore. So I just tell my clients, like, either you trust me or you don't. So if this person needs a day off and they're not feeling well and they're sitting here suffering, first of all, I don't want to get whatever it is they're sniffling right. about or whatever. That's number one. Number yep. two, they are exhausted. They are tired. They are doing half-assed work, mm-hmm. which is yep. costing you more money, dumbass. Right. Like, I get, right. I have no patience right. for my clients no more than nice. The reason why I brought that up and the reason why I, I and I said this to my boss afterwards, um, I said, you know, you get three bereavement days when somebody passes away. Yes. So where my mother passed away, I got three days off. Wow. Wow. And then I, I went back to work. I was not emotionally no. ready to go back to work. I just lost my mother. Right. And I was fine during the day. I'll never forget it. But everybody kept coming up to me saying, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so yep. And I just kept hearing it over oh. and over and over again right. until I just, I lost it. Yep. Right. And one of my really good friends, who I'm still good friends with today, she's like, no, 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 you're going home. She called up, she called down to our manager, the, wow. the, the big guy, the big boy. And he said, tell him to come down. I went downstairs, went into his office. He said, this is what's going to happen. You're going to go home mm-hmm. and you're going to take the rest of the week off. And then you call me when you're ready to come That's back. That's right. That's how it works. Never had, I could have taken a whole week off. Right. But it was like, so I had, you know, a couple of weekdays and then the weekend off to regroup. Mm-hmm. Mm. And I called him and I called him at home because I had his home phone number and I said, I'm ready to come back to work. And it's the little things like that that you do for people that people appreciate. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the most important lessons that I learned mm-hmm. in my career. And that's why I had said to my boss, listen. Her cousin just died of a massive heart attack at 54 years old. He went to sleep and never woke up. Mm -hmm. I know it's not immediate family, but let's cut some slack here. Right. You know what the job gave you? The job gave you respect. Going back to what you said, respect. Mm -hmm. Steven said, I've seen my manager cry at work from the stress of higher bosses. That makes sense. When I worked at my company, I cried in my office almost every day. Every day. And my assistants would come in and they would be like, are are you, can we get you anything? They were so stressed because I was like a basket case. I actually ended up going to the hospital. This is that brand new school. I don't even mind mentioning it. We were right at the beginning of becoming really, really big. And I ended up having, uh, I didn't know, Ben walked into the office. He was one of the designers at the time creative directors. And he was like, what's wrong with your face? Mm-hmm. And I had this whole side of my face was like hanging down. I stroke. didn't know. A stroke. They a stroke. thought it. So they that rushed palsy, me to the probably. hospital. It was palsy. What is it? How do you that say it? Palsy. That was palsy. Yeah. Was my mom's palsy. had it twice. Yeah. And here's the thing. I should have quit then. I stayed mm. four more years. Mm. And the stress oh. just got crazy. I was flying back and forth. You know, it was ridiculous. But yeah, I would cry in my office all the time. Mm. Another word I'd like to bring up, we we talked a lot about respect tonight. Another word I'd like to bring up, and we don't have to, because I know we're short on time, but maybe the next time, compassion. Compassion for each other, human beings, people in general. Compassion for our elders, compassion for younger people coming up. 
Ooh, that's a good one. Can I we talk about that? that? Yeah, it needs to be Passion mutual. for younger people. Put it, it on the list. Mutual. It needs to be mutual. It yeah. needs to be mutual between both sides, 100%. But does it, I mean, you can't expect it to always be mutual. You have to be the person to do it so that other people will start to learn to do it. It's not going to be mutual because people are not doing it. But don't we always go back to saying the same thing, that if you want to be respected, you have to earn respect and you have to give respect. Yes, mutual. Mutual. Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Okay. I I'm, so. I'm, I'm going to say it this way. Like I, if I don't know you, cause nine times out of 10, when I walk into an office, I don't know anybody there. I'm going to respect you. Right. I don't need you to earn it. I respect you cause you a human being, but it's, you will lose it very quickly. Mm. If you choose to act like an asshole yes. <laughs> like, and that's where it gets a little bit harder. That's what I'm saying. Like sometimes you do have to then turn around and be compassionate anyways. Like mm. I might not have respect. Like, I'm, the reason why I bring this up is I'm having an issue right now with, with a certain person. I have compassion for their situation, but I have no respect for them whatsoever. Like I'm done. I'm done with them. I'm done. Different things. Compassion. Yeah. Respect are two different. Yeah. And that's why I said that's another subject to talk about to bring up at the next <laughs> Look at Cynthia. Sassy Carmen will come up. Hey, you know. <laughs> like, Carmen Steve knows did. that I can get ghetto. I grew up <laughs> well. She didn't say ghetto. She says sassy. That I, was I know, but I'm saying I you know I can get ghetto. <laughs> it is ghetto. It is. Um, I read a book. Wait. Well, I read in a book, compassion for others is the key to joy. I like that. Mm. I like that. Ooh. I like that. That's a nice motto right there. Mm-hmm. 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 I'm writing a book on all about the joy, so I'm just going to keep quiet. <laughs> so I just um can't wait for that. Wait, uh, what's that? What's that thumbs up, thumbs up thing? She liked what I, um, she agrees with me. I like Where did you come up at? I've, I've never seen that before. Who did that? that? Before. I've seen it happen. It's been happening there. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, they're happened. like little emojis. Okay, I'm so confused right now. Wait, <laughs> Rick, have you seen that before? I didn't even see it now. No, I didn't see anything. So I've on Tommy's screen, yeah. somebody did like a bubble thumbs and up. a thumbs up. And it just, I've know. never seen that. I guess nobody likes us, Rick. That's why they like <laughs> And when it's we say they, we know it's been, the you know. <laughs> <So. laughs> before, and it's popped wow. up in the rooms I was doing on the other app, too. That's something new that there is on everybody's computers. I, I don't get But it. is it Restream or is it YouTube? That's my question. I've seen it on Cantina. Well, that's oh, so it's probably YouTube. It's probably YouTube then. Yeah, but we're on Restream, though, so we I don't think that we're I know I you can know. do it on Zoom, and... Um, yeah. There's another platform you can do it on too, because we used to use do it at work all the time. Maybe I've done it too. Cynthia's <laughs> laughing. We interrupted this whole thing for some pop up screen stuff. Because it was cool. I know it was Cynthia. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding with you, Cynthia. Cynthia's married, and 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 Tommy is lovely, but Tommy's not gonna love us. Uh-uh. Look at. <laughs> Cynthia and I going to talk later. I'm pleading the fifth. You mean you plead the fifth? You mean you the fifth? Child, we all tried when you were younger. We knew. We knew it was over. There was no, no possibility. When Stephen said compassion for others is a key to joy, it makes me think of another very famous person that said it's better to give than to receive. Um, Don't even you try to put Jesus all up in here <laughs> in your sly motherfucking way. I okay. didn't even say his name. You did. <laughs> try to sneak in his little Jesus shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, when you are able to give. I disagree with that, by the way. But I when you're agree. able to give, though, it does make you feel good. Yes. Yeah, but you have to. Here's where I disagree with it. And I know, I know I'm disagreeing with the Lord. I know. That's why we have issues between you and me with the Bible. But here's the thing. I actually think we need to all get better about receiving. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to receive in grace. You know how insulting it is when you try. Imagine 
you get a gift together, you you really put your heart and soul into it because you want to help somebody, you want to give somebody something, and you give it to them, and they're like, oh no 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 thank you no 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 I don't, and they have to Tommy, fight. Write this one to down for the you? next topic too. Write this one down as well for the next. Why, why are you trying to make me write this down? No 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 no, because you brought up a good point. That's gonna be a great conversation. Mm-hmm. But I do think it. Well, I don't. I know see where. I'm, oh no no no! I see where Tony's going with this. I'm on why? Board Tell me now. We still nope. have six minutes. Nope. Write it down. Tony, cheers to you, even though I'm drinking water, but cheers to you. We're on the same page. I will the admit that we've made tonight that's going to be a great broadcast when bringing up a conversation the same yes. way tonight has been, honestly. And it will correlate. You will enjoy it. See, we're working with you. We're working with you. Okay. <laughs> I just feel like y'all hurting my feelings. And, um, <laughs> we, got we got you. Don't you worry about it. No, no. All right. Well, I don't know. Rick, are you in on this too with the boys? I, no, I was going to say that I, I freely admit I'm maybe one of those that has a little bit of an issue of receiving. And I'm like, just be happy. Enjoy it. Stop feeling guilty or whatever it is I'm thinking about. Can my I head. tell you where it comes from from me? Because this will put a twist on it. This is going to put a twist on it. And and I don't mean to make anyone feel bad. The reason why I believe this in my heart of hearts is my mother died at 49 because she didn't ask for help. Mm. Mm. And I find it hard to believe, even though I don't remember her that well at all. I'm not going to sit and pretend like I remember whatever. I cannot believe if she was even one tenth of the woman that people told me she was, that I believe that she was, just even one-tenth, that there weren't people around trying to say to her, let me help you. Mm. Let let me help you out with this. Let me do something for you. Is there something? I'm not saying there's probably a lot of people. It was a different time, right? It was a different time. But when you grow up knowing that your mother died of a really stupid, stupid issue, she died of a cardiac arrest due to asthma, something that even back then could have been taken care of. And when you realize someone died so young, you start to rethink. And also, and again, and I, you know me, I'm never going to prop up my book. My whole book is about people reaching out and seeing a little kid and saying, let me help you. Mm -hmm. And me saying, yes. I mean, begrudgingly as a kid, but still like, (laughs) you know what I mean? You have to be able to receive. You have Can I tell you something that I don't think you know? Oh, God. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> you know Michael, you know Michael Bonanno, right? Okay, let's go with yes. Okay. <laughs> I matched with him in St. Anthony's. He taught St. Anthony's. He taught Avalaro's. Michael, he's good friends with Jerry. Okay, go ahead. None of he's us also a school know. teacher. <laughs> okay. For summer reading, he gave all his students your book to read. No way. Wow. Yes, he did. Wow. I should know who he is. And he said, (laughs) I I know you need. I need to see a face. We have a picture picture of him somewhere. I have a picture of him somewhere. I'll show you. That's cool. He's not Uh, on Facebook? He is on Facebook, actually. Why didn't he tell me? You know, I was doing speaking events in Boston before the pandemic. I was so excited. I did three. Yeah, I don't recall my about. phone ringing. Hmm. No, no. I, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> he said. No, no. I went to do speaking events because of my book. And then the pandemic hit. But I did not know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. I know. I didn't think you knew it. But I was like, you know what? I feel like I need to tell her. Yeah, it's great that you told me live and you know, <laughs> like totally live. Like, I have no idea. But you know what? Is. I want you to think of it, and I know you're not going to think about this because when they came back and he, you know, discussed it with his class, how many lives do you think you may have changed? Mm. She's about to blush. I can't wait. She's about to blush. <laughs> <laughs> think about that. <laughs> It's like that movie, It's a Wonderful Life. You have no idea. How many Mama, can I tell you something? Oh, my gosh. Your book is going to do what you told us the internet's going to do. It's going to be forever. There's this new thing here on this program that where might. I can turn around and I can block you all off easily. <laughs> Look at Cynthia. How do you receive, receive that? that info? <laughs> you <laughs> <this one. laughs> uh, you were the one who told me to be careful how I come across and how how to be careful of projecting myself and look at the impact you had that you didn't even damn realize. Go ahead and cry. What is it you want me to do? <laughs> Go ahead and cry. 
<laughs> wait, 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 wait. Here's the thing. What is it that you, I, I, I didn't know that Michael did that. I feel bad. I don't remember who he is. So I feel I need, you know, I talked to Tommy on the phone, which you could have shared this on the phone with me, but that's okay. Good job, Tommy. Cheers. <laughs> but, you know, but I'm just saying like, I need, you know, I, there's a lot of people that I don't remember for a very real reason. There was a lot of people back then that yeah. were around us and watching us perform and working with us and that we were part of groups with. Like, I don't remember everyone. And you were young. Uh, awesome. And I was young. I was really young. So, so I'm feeling bad. Like, here's the thing. I don't want to be, of course, I know how many people's lives. Yeah, I'm not going to say that. I know how many people have affected me and helped change my life and my hope and my try and my goal every day is to be the best person I possibly can and give back and pay it forward because, and and that's what we're talking about, right? People were so compassionate about me. These are blue collar working people who didn't have extra money, who didn't have extra presents at Christmas, who didn't have extra food to, to, to give away, who didn't have extra money to go buy clothes or costumes, makeup, all the things, all the dance shoes, all the things we needed, leotards, whatever. And you know what? All these people, Laura Wall is a great mm-hmm. example. Laura Wall's family yep. turned around and they saw a kid and turned around and said, you know what? We're going to make sure she has a Christmas. We're going to make sure she has a couch. You know, they didn't have an extra guest house or guest room or a pool house, you know? And I am always going to be grateful for that. The wall, but- the they were always known as the walls and they they will always be known as the walls. Yeah, the walls. They and our circle. And our yeah. circle. They, yeah. Everybody says, Oh yeah, the walls. Oh yeah, you the know. Walls. They were amazing. The walls. Everybody knows the walls. But I mean, I, I will receive like I will receive compliments and that's kind of a different thing, like what you guys are you know, it's not that I get bashful about my book. The reason why I don't push my book is because for me. It wasn't meant to be a book. So in a way, it feels like a fraud. I tried to explain this to Rick. And Rick, you understood what I was trying to say. Mm -hmm. I wrote the book. I wrote letters to individual people. Someone told me to make it into a book. And so I did. Gotcha. But it wasn't the intention. It was not Jerry. Um, It was a thank you to the people in your life. Jared. I'm sorry? I didn't say Jerry. I said Jared. Oh, that's the um, names will be changed to protect. Right, I don't remember everybody's names. I changed it to, but Jerry is is Jared, right? Is yes. it Jerry? Jared? Yeah. Jerry is. Now Jared. I had to change names really fast because legally <laughs> I wasn't going to go finding everybody to do it. Oh my so god! I when I read me. that chapter, I was like, "She's talking about Jerry." I know she's talking <laughs> know. about Jerry. <laughs> people who knew knew their chapters or the people that we were talking about. You change know names, so, change genders. You know. Yeah. Well, no, that was just one person who's just one person. And then and then she was mad at me because I did. I'm like, you want to be anonymous all the time. And now I do it in the book and you get mad. So I was like, I can't win either way. And actually I just spoke to her the other day. That was so funny. But um if I understand correctly, it was more like thank you to all the people that were there for me and helped me out. That's really what the book was about. Yes. That's what I got out of it. Yes, that's what the book was about. Hundred percent. Yeah. And I'm writing the second book to Canela and I have a name for it. I'm not going to tell you, but I do have a great name for it. And, um, oh, and surprise us. I like surprises. Yeah. And it's, and it's a much more intentional story and it's about what happens next. And again, see now if I had a lot of money, that's what I would spend my time doing for the next three months. Like if I had enough money to cover for the next three to six months, my rent, my food, whatever, like what I'm making now and I could leave my clients <laughs> I would just, I would, I would have two shows a week. You know what I mean? I would hook us up doing what we're doing. I would turn around and then just work on these two books, the all about the joy book and the continuation to Canela. Cause mm. it's so hard to do it when you're working 40, 50 hours a week. Right. And that's what money gives you is choices and opportunity. You know, yeah. it's not going to yeah. make me happy. Yeah. So but, that four day weekend, at least for some people, you know, Thanksgiving, we had to off, whatever. I was like, I'm able to sleep now more. Mm-hmm. I, my mind is in a better place. My creative juices were flowing. When I'm like, oh, wow, I got all these ideas. I didn't even realize I didn't have because I was so tired all the time. Yeah. Right, you know? The creative juices flowing. Even when I do my broadcast, I try not to do one until I can feel a comfortable vibe. 
to put out there what I want to put out there. And I've always told, I've always said that before. So I get that entirely. You don't have a relaxation moment. And Rick, I know you got more going on than just work. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily attribute what you have going on to work just being the only issue. No disrespect. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, are we hiding something? Well, we don't put a lot out there, but we know what's going on, Rick. You and I both know what's going on, Rick, outside of work. I'm so Rick. confusion. What are we are we talking about? His mom? Keep it offline. Thank you. That's all. He <laughs> talks about it all the time. I, know, <laughs> I, I, I let him talk about it. I try to. Oh, it. I'm so sorry. I'm, is that what we're talking about? Not the time of the place. In my no, opinion, he told me he talks about it all the time. So in I'm. My, in my opinion, opinion yes. Don't oh, okay, okay. Tommy, Rick takes care of his mom. We all know. Oh, we I do. didn't know that. Now I do know it. I know. That's why I'm confused. Why are we keeping well, it Well, you know Tommy? what? My respect level for Rick just went up 10 more points. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, have a lot of respect for a son who takes care of his mother because, believe me, I did it for many, many years. Mm. Yeah, I know I what it's like. I didn't know if we like. were, were hiding a different thing. I was no, 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 no. And dementia is no joke. No. Oh, that's even worse. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I feel bad. Like I feel like I have you guys have like a little club and shit, and you guys are like have all these secrets. Like <laughs> feeling very alone. We have brought you <laughs> into the world. Just stop. <laughs> I feel like I, I made connections with people, and now I'm being left out of the group. <laughs> no, all right, we're gonna jump off because you have another show, Tony D. No, I do not. Yes, oh, really? Hex is going to be on at seven fifteen. Just got the message. He won't be able. To... Oh, okay. Oh. So we're going for another hour. Just kidding. We are not going to be on for another hour. <laughs> Why is he not? Well, I have to go. It's ten o'clock here. He has some things he has to do. So he said he won't be able to make. It's ten okay. p.m. here, so I need to, you know, Teddy I need to duty rest. Yes. <laughs> oh, baby. Okay. No, you don't. Are we in the book? Um, are we in the book, volume number two? <laughs> oh, hell to the no. I kind of where I would be in <laughs> the book. Hell to the Wait. no. Lord. <laughs> Haps people. That's a whole book all by itself. <laughs> That's a movie. It's a movie. Trust me. Yeah. It's um, the DVD extra specials that come out later. <laughs> So, look at, before we go, let me just say a few things. First of all, to my guests, thank you so much. My co-hosts, I adore you, Rick Costa, Tony D. Thank you. Tony D is going to be on the show on a regular basis, right? We're doing it once a month, third sure. Thursday of the month. We'll see sure. you then. Tommy, welcome to the show, and I'm so glad. And you're going to try to jump on even next week, right, with, with uh, the other crew, if we can get you in. So, yeah. we're going to have Tommy pop in um, when he can. So, thank you so much. I also want to give a shout out to a few other people. I want to say thank you to everybody on Facebook who joined today. I don't know what happened. Something mm-hmm. happened where a bunch of people just joined the Facebook page. Very grateful. Very grateful for a couple people who joined on YouTube. Thank you. And you know, I'm going to give my shout out to my LinkedIn people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're getting a lot of people. That's it. Thank you, everyone. And remember, it's all about the joy. And we'll see you next week. Goodbye, everyone. See you. Good night, all. Peace, y'all. Thanks for stopping by All About the Joy. Be better and stay beautiful, folks. Have a sweet day.